Hey guys, welcome back to the Yankees franchise, episode 14 in the month of July as we're right before the All-Star break here in season two of this Yankees franchise. As you can see, uh, one game away, we're going to play the Nationals in this first game, Garrett Cole versus Zaya Gray. Um, and we're going to look uh, real quick at the standings, 55 and 37, so we're two and a half games out of the 57 and 34 Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, it's very much looking like a two-team race in the AL East yet again between us and the Rays. The Red Sox only six out, but um, six out is kind of a lot. But it's still still technically early at the All-Star break. As you can see, the Red Sox are actually the team right behind us in the wild card as well. And then the Guardians and then the Astros right behind them. And the Tigers still somewhat sticking around, three and a half out. Let's look at the lineup real quick. Uh, Tyler O'Neill is hitting only 228, 11 home runs, 31 RBIs. Shohei's having a great year, 31 bombs before the All-Star break, 82 RBIs, and he's at 253, which is not the highest average, but hey, I mean, look at those stats, we'll take it. Aaron Judge is hitting 309. he has 25 bombs, 63 RBIs, on a normal season we would think of how incredible that is, but Shohei's doing that good where it's like, it looks okay. Anthony Rizzo, the best of them all on batting average, 332, 24 runs, and 53 RBIs before the All-Star break. He's on pace for a career year at this age and his contract year as well. So we're going to have a decision to make when the season's over because he's just doing that well. Uh, Stanton's hitting 264. He's got 14 home runs, 35 RBI. I just can't complain with any of that for a 77 overall rated player, no matter what he's making. Condelario, I like that re-signing, and he's playing very well. 264 with 14 bombs and 40 RBIs. We like that in the middle of the order. Oswald Peraza. Uh, slow with a batting average, 223. Does have 40 RBIs, which is nice. Seven home runs, so uh, not bad on pace for maybe a 20 home run season. Uh, Volpe has 13 home runs. Batting low with the 214 batting average, but uh, he's showing pop and he's getting RBIs, so we can't complain. And in the first 70 at bats of his career, Austin Wells is hitting 286, so not bad. Only three RBIs, but he hits ninth, so you don't expect a lot of RBIs from him. 286, though, very good. Uh, Trevino on the bench, hitting 170. LeMay Hughes batting 196. Um, so this bench has given us no production uh, that much. Nick Ahmed only is really in for defensive purposes. Has 119 bats, hitting 244. Uh, whatever. Uh, Willie Calhoun is just, uh, I think he's glitched in this franchise. He, I don't think he hits lower than like 340. So. Uh, he does good. There's just no spot for him on the field. And Max Kepler, who actually has a lot of at-bats, 154, uh, is hitting 182. Doesn't have a home run. And has a couple RBIs. That's it. Uh, for the pitching, it's, uh, it's slowly getting better, but it's still not great. Shohei Otani is a 5.31 ERA. He's 4-7. That is not an ace uh, that we were expecting. Uh, Rodon is pitching very well. 3.38. Brought that ERA way down. Uh, so 3.38 is not bad at all. Garrett Cole, although he's brought it down, it's still pretty high. 4.88 ERA from him. He'll take the mound in this first game of this episode against Washington. Nestor Cortez has the lowest ERA on the staff. Uh, again, for the since he had the lowest in the whole MLB last year. And now he's got the lowest on the staff with a 2.85. Only guy with a sub-3. And Domingo Herman is a 4-3-1, who is, uh, as for a fifth starter, I'm not going to complain with the 4-3-1, although he's 4-10 and in decisions. Not great. Uh, especially for a contract year, I don't think Domingo Herman will be signed back. But you never know. We'll see how he pitches in the second half. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the bullpen. Nothing uh, too outrageous, nothing too bad. Canely and Clevenger, both in the twos. Uh, Loisaga in the low threes. Uh, Marinaccio is 36 innings pitched. His ERA is 0 0.5. Unbelievable. A sub one. Uh, oh, Kurt has such a high ERA. I'm thinking about maybe just letting him go, sending him down, see if he goes on waivers or something. Uh, and then Hicks and Clay Holmes are pitching well. So everyone besides Oh, Kurt has been pitching well. Uh, we got to figure out what we're going to do with him because uh, maybe we trade for a different reliever at the deadline. But we we do have a lot of problems. It looks like our starting pitching is a problem. So maybe we do something there. I'm not I'm not too sure. Anyway, like we said, Garrett Cole on the mound with that 4.88 ERA. But usually when I pitch with him in the gameplay, he pitches pretty well as he strikes out Lane Thomas to end the first there. And there's Josiah Gray, 1-8 with a 4.66 ERA. So not great. Uh, this should be a game uh, we should win. And it would be a nice little win going into the All-Star break as Shohei Otani goes deep. No doubt about that one in the right. That one is gone in the third deck. I think that went in the third deck. 
or like the suites above the second deck. I'm not sure, but that ball was blasted. Home run 32 before the break for Shohei Otani. What a signing he's been. Although he's been very underwhelming uh, on the mound, he's been uh, more than we could have asked for at the plate. Uh, so as long as he could figure out the pitching in this second half of the season um, and he could keep hitting like this, we should be doing pretty well. Uh, we really shouldn't be losing the division with this team we got. As Cole, you can see there, he was kind of cruising along with a couple Ks. Shohei again, no, look at this. Gets Josiah Gray again, no doubt in the right. Uh, that one is long, long gone as it misses the bleachers, but it's way out of there. Second of the game, and that means 33 now before the break as uh, that pace he's on is incredible. 374, that ball is way up there with that launch angle, way out of here as uh, that one is gone. Anthony Rizzo, our hottest hitter. In terms of average, he's going to take Josiah Gray deep as well. It's a home run derby for all these lefties here. That one's off the facing of the second deck. 4 nothing Yanks. Anthony Rizzo, I believe that's 25 for him now. Uh, with that, yeah, 25 and uh, just getting that batting average up with every hit and every homer. So he's just doing incredible this season. Uh, in the sixth, Garrett Cole still chugging along. Going to get a wild pitch. Austin Wells tries to throw to third to get the out, and he throws it in the left field. Run's going to score. So error from Austin Wells uh, brings in a run. It's 4-1. Uh, Michael Chavis at the plate, and he's going to rip one in the gap. Giancarlo Stanton's obviously not going to get there, and he's going to take forever to get to that ball. Uh, but it's going to be a double, a one-out double for Michael Chavis. No, he's going to third. Volpe's throw is not in time, and such a slow relay getting to it from Stanton out there and left. Uh, makes it a triple, and that would be the end of Garrett Cole's night. So he pitched pretty good, uh, but he couldn't get out of the sixth inning as a little bit of a mess. Uh, guy on second, then an error from the catcher was a run, and now a triple. Uh, Marinaccio, who uh, has that sub-1 ERA, is going to get one strikeout and a second strikeout for former Yankee, who we traded them, Oswaldo Cabrera. Uh, so 4-1 in the sixth, bottom six now. Oswald Peraza goes deep, no doubt about that one. You don't see him hitting. A lot of no-doubters, but that one's way out of here. And that's another uh, home run for the Yanks. Three-run shot this time, 7-1. to one. They hit it in the rain. That ball was crushed. Eighth home run of the season for Oswald Peraza in the first half. Power numbers aren't up, but, I mean, it's not terrible. 446 from Oswald Peraza. He got all of that one as I went over the Nationals bullpen. That's how this game would end, 7-1. The umps would call this for a rain out, and that would be the end of that. Let's take a look at who uh, got to the All-Star game as uh, Taj Bradley's having an incredible year for the Tampa Bay Rays. Sub-2 ERA. Uh, DeGrom, another Rays pitcher in Jeffrey Springs. Baltimore's Tyler Wells having a great year. And another Rays pitcher, Tyler Glass now. So three of the five starting pitchers are from the Tampa Bay Rays. It's no surprise they're in first place. This guy, Jason Foley. Uh, made it as a reliever. Closers, we got Jansen, Duran, Hader, Holmes, and uh, Klaus San Romano. So, Clay Holmes for us. As you see, Josh Hader actually went to the Blue Jays in this. Uh, Clay Holmes for us made the All-Star team. So, that's our first representative. Uh, so far, obviously, we'll get Shohei in here. Um, but that'll be for left field, I believe. Uh, so, Romano went to the Angels, and the Blue Jays got Josh Hader. Interesting. Uh, Eric Haas, Alejandro Kirk, and Salvador Perez for the catching. Uh, no surprises there. Rizzo wins the first baseman spot. 335 batting average of 25 bombs. Yeah, he deserved that. And then Luke Voigt, former Yank, made it. He's got 14 home runs. Pretty impressive. Uh, 269 average, 14 home runs for Luke Voigt. Good for him. Good to see him back uh, playing well again uh, with Seattle this time. Um, we got uh, Marcus Simeon and uh, Luis Renjifo. Uh, for second base, as uh, Simeon looks like he's having a solid year when he was batting 279. At third, look at this. Uh, Jose Ramirez, Gunnar Henderson, yeah, they deserved it, their numbers. But Kevin Smith from the Oakland A's hits 222 with four home runs and 18 RBIs, and he made the all-star team. I don't get it. Look at Jose Ramirez, 75 RBIs. And then Kevin Smith, also, also an all-star with 18. It makes zero sense. Uh, but this game does that sometimes, uh, th all the time, really. There's usually that one person that doesn't deserve to make it. It's just randomly in there. Let's we'll say all these left fielders deserve to make it, though. Jordan somehow the top, hitting 318-29. Shohei had 33 homers. Verdugo is back 354 in, in Saint. And uh, Rose Arena is having the worst year out of these guys, and he's having a pretty good one. So left field stacked for the American League. Luis Robert 
center field for the American League. Trout did not make it. And then uh, Aaron Judge and Kyle Tucker, who's been having a great year, uh, he makes the all-star team. He's going to start and right, and Judge won't be starting, even though he's having a great year. I'll go to the National League real quick. Another former Yankee, Jameson Tyone, 13-1 and with a sub-2 ERA. That's kind of ridiculous. As you see everyone else uh, who made it there, Max Fried, Zach Gallen, Corbin Burns, and uh, Tony Gonsolin. For the National League starters, they're all uh, having pretty solid years, all with sub-3 ERAs. Uh, the Dodgers reliever is on there. Uh, Edwin Diaz has a sub-1 ERA, .26 in 35 innings. Insane from Edwin Diaz. David Bednar for the Padres, he's having a great year. Camilo Duvall on the Giants, Evan Phillips on the Dodgers. A.J. Puck from Miami, and uh, Devin Williams from Milwaukee as well. Uh, for the catcher spot, it's JT. Gary Sanchez, former Yankee, another former Yankee who kind of washed making the all-star team. So Luke Voigt and Gary Sanchez making it. Uh, Ryan McMahon's having a great year. Former Yankee, Labor Torres. Hey, we traded him to the Cardinals. Him and Nolan Gorman made the all-star team uh, for St. Louis. Nolan Gorman actually has 21 bombs, doing very good. Glaber's having a fantastic season. We Well, maybe we were wrong about trading him, um, but... You know, it made sense. We didn't have, we had too many infielders. We needed an outfielder. And he just cost a lot of money. But anyway, uh, Jace Peterson makes it 273, five home runs, 25 RBIs. That was another one. You got to see this, though. Trey Turner and Jordan Lawler makes it, batting 186, 186 with six home runs and 16 RBIs, and he made the all star team. How does that happen? I don't understand. Uh, the, the fans voted for him as a, as a joke, I guess. Corbin Carroll, he's having a fantastic season. He's going to make it. Ian Happen wants Soto as well. Uh, Brandon Nimmo made it for the center field. And uh, in right, Tatis Jr., Cunha Jr., and uh, Jorge Soler, not Jr., makes it in right. We're going to go ahead and uh, go towards the end of July, right before the trade deadline now, as uh, the Red Sox uh, are doing okay, not as good as us. We'll, we'll be taking them on. Uh, Tanner Houck uh, on the mound for the Red Sox, and Nestor Cortez on the mound for us, still rocking that 2-8 ERA, uh, very good stuff, 10-5 uh, and five record as well. In the bottom of the first, it is uh, Kevin Newman at the plate with the Red Sox threatening, and that little squib is going to get past Anthony Rizzo down the first baseline, that's going to be a run. Uh, Newman tries to go for second, and uh, the throw beats him by a lot, but Volpe is having trouble slapping tags on guys, I don't know what it is. Uh, but he's safe at second, which leads Alex Verdugo to rip one down the right field line. Bounces over the wall for a ground rule double, but the run scores 2 nothing. Verdugo eventually on third. It's Trevor Story. Hits one deep to center field. That ball's carrying and carrying and carrying. And Perea, who we called up, uh, it goes over his head and it's off the wall. It's a triple for Trevor Story. RBI triple, 3 nothing. Boston in the first. Still 3 nothing. Next batter's Christian Arroyo. He bloops one in the center. That'll be caught by Pereira, but uh, that'll be deep enough to score Trevor's story as uh, Pereira had uh, not the best throw in the world. 4 nothing to start this game off. In a second, though, is Jaimer Candelario for us. He's going to rip one to right, and that wall being short, and it's going to go over it into the Yankee bullpen. Just clears the wall out there for a home run. 393 feet, and it just barely was a home run. Not the shallowest field in the right field uh, past that pesky pole. But home run, 4-1. Uh, Everson Pereira, I wanted to uh, bring this up. He has his first Major League ca career hit here. This was his MLB debut, actually. We called him up straight from AA temporarily. And I will explain why at the end of this game. But uh, he will not be staying on the roster. He just made like a spot start for now because, uh, well, I don't want to spoil anything. But we did have uh, a parent and one injury that we need to address. Uh, but anyway, in the third... Uh, Aaron Judge, he rips on all the way to the wall. Werner's going to come around and score all the way from first. Uh, it's 4-2. Cut this lead in uh, into only a two-run deficit. Anthony Rizzo, he rips one in the gap. He stays hot. That's headed towards the triangle. And it's gone. It clears the wall. Tie game. 4-4 Yanks. That ball found its way out. Just snuck out. That's his 29th home run as we're still in the month of July and uh, he's definitely going to pass his career high of uh, 33, I believe it is. Uh, in the sixth, though, Nestor trying to battle through. He had a bad first inning. 
fought his way pitch well into the sixth and he gives up another run 5-4 we're going all the way to the ninth trying to get a rally off Kenley Jansen and Rizzo goes deep goes way back as the right fielder back and back and back and it's off the very top of that small wall just missed the game tying home run but we got a lead off double in the ninth we could not do anything Max Kepler's our last hope is two outs he's two for two this game Although he hasn't been hitting well, and he pops this one up to right. Can of corn for the right fielder. We're going to lose to Boston 5-4 uh, in this one as they get the win right before the trade deadline. And uh, before we start talking about the trade deadline, I want to show you why Everson Perra was up from AA. Uh, because Tyler O'Neill actually fractured his arm, and he's out for two to three months and he should be back before, I think, the end of the regular season. It kind of just depends how it goes. If he's not back for the end of the regular season, he should be back by the playoffs. Uh, I just don't know for sure. But, uh, you know, he wasn't having the best year, but he was having solid. He was really heating up. He got that average up to 249. I think when I showed in the beginning, it was at like 211 or something. But he got that average up. He has 14 home runs, 44 RBIs, 16 stolen bases. He's going to be a big loss for this team, so we need to figure out what we're going to do with the trade deadline. I'm not sure. Uh, let me know what you guys think. We'll see. we got to plug in an outfielder somewhere. We'll figure it out. I'll come back in the next episode with a, prob a possible trade. And uh, even though we got to address pitching as well, we don't have anyone to trade, so we got to figure that out. I'll see you guys in the next episode. We'll make a trade, and then we'll, we'll start wrapping up the end of year two. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.